Hey, today we're looking at function-like preprocessor macros. Welcome back, friends. In the past, several of you have expressed interest in diving a little deeper into the preprocessor and talking a little bit about function style macros. So I want to do that today, both talking about the basics and some of the ways that you can get yourself into trouble with the preprocessor. Now, of course, we're going to be making source code in this video. And as always, source code is available through Patreon. A big thanks to all of you who support this channel. But first off, let's talk a little bit about what the preprocessor is. So the preprocessor is basically a program that processes, it takes your program and processes it before the compiler gets a hold of it. That's the whole idea of pre-processing is it processes it before. So it does some initial processing. And basically any line in your C program that starts with a pound sign is going to be handled by the preprocessor. So that means include statements like this are handled by the preprocessor. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've definitely seen me use pound define to also use the preprocessor to define constants that are then included into the program in various places. But today I want to look at some slightly more advanced preprocessor stuff and stuff that can get you into trouble if you're not careful. And that is specifically want to talk about function like preprocessor macros. And I'm thinking that the best way to illustrate this is through code. So let's dive into it. Okay, so here's a simple empty program. And I have a make file up here. It's going to compile that program, nothing fancy. And let's just start by creating a really simple function like preprocessor macro. And I'll explain this as we go. But when I type in pound define, and I pass in, let's give it a identifier, in this case, min. Now, if this identifier happens to have parentheses after it, that is going to tell the preprocessor that the thing I'm going to define here is going to behave like a function, not like a value or an object. Now, in this macro, I'm going to pass in two values, a and b. And then what I want to do is just use the ternary operator to test to see if a is less than b and if a is less than b, then we're going to evaluate to a, and otherwise we'll evaluate to b. Um, we looked at the ternary operator in a previous video. Check that out if this is uncomfortable at all. But the idea about this function like macro is it's really simple. It's just going to return the minimum of two things. And of course, this macro is very basic. You could get fancier if you like, but in the interest of clarity, I'm just going to start with this. Okay, so let, now let's just make sure that we know what this is doing. So let's go down here and let's say print f. Let's print out an integer. And let's just print out the minimum of two integers. Let's take 45 and 672. Okay, so th what this should do is this should print out the minimum of these two integers. And of course, I'm using constant values here in a real program. They would probably be integer variables. But now we can come down and we can compile our program. It's just going to be called test. And if we run it, you can see that sure enough, we do print out the minimum of those two integer values. Okay, so now at this point, let's just talk about what's happening here. Basically, when we typed min 45 comma 672, the preprocessor saw this before the compiler got a hold of it and replaced this with our ternary operator code. And I want you to be able to see this. So I added a, a target to my make file called make pre. And basically all this does is compiles with the dash E option. And you can see that here, basically this dash E, all this dash E says is just run the preprocessor, don't compile the code. So when I say make pre, what it is doing is it's basically just showing me the preprocessor code. And you can see here that it's basically just replaced my min four, five, six, seven, two with this ternary operator, right? So we just replaced it straight up. And okay, so that's interesting, but why would we want to do this? Why not just make a min function that takes two arguments, both integers and returns the smaller of them? Now, there are a few reasons and some people's reasons aren't always great reasons, but one reason might be flexibility. Now, with this macro, I can compare two integers, which I just did but I can also come down here and I can make floats. So let's say like 53.4 and maybe I change this one up to 17.2 and then I change this to a floating point, right? I can do this and it's just going to work just fine. It doesn't really care if they're integers or floats because this ternary operator, this operation is going to look the same for floats and ints. It just doesn't care. So that's one reason we might want to do this. Another reason is you might want to avoid the runtime overhead of a function call. Now I see this most often in embedded systems when you might be trying to optimize something that has to be very, very quick. And of course, you don't want to take the time to push arguments onto stacks and jump and things like that. Of course, the reality is, is often you can get the same speed up by using compiler optimizations. And if you're not careful with macros, you might end up with no speed up at all. You might actually end up making things slower. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. 
And finally, a third reason is you might want your function to do something that C can't do, like having a function like macro define other functions for you. That's something that a normal function can't really do, but macros can do it. And today I'm not gonna provide a definitive guide about when you should or should not use function style macros. And I'm not gonna go into all of the crazy uses that they can have. I just wanna talk about how they work and some of the issues that you should be aware of before you go crazy and start replacing all of your functions with preprocessor macros. So one issue that you can run into is that flexibility that we just talked about, that first thing that I mentioned. Well, it's a blessing and a curse. And that's because I can also do things like this. So I can say, pass in a string. Now, so here I'm saying, I wanna compare a double and a string. And if I try to compile this, of course it doesn't make any sense, but the min macro doesn't know anything about type. So it just goes right ahead. If I look at the pre-processed code, you see, it just sticks that string in there. It doesn't really care. And when I compile it, it still produces an error, but in some ways I find that the errors produced by expanded macros are a little bit less helpful than the errors that are produced by functions. So that's definitely a downside. And that's the most common issue that comes up with preprocessor stuff is the preprocessor doesn't do much type checking. And so it can produce some weird and complicated bugs that would be easier to track down if you used functions. Now, another issue comes up if I try to pass something more complicated to this macro. So let's just change up our example a little bit. Um, my indentation is off. Let's make two integers and one and n two. Uh, let's make three, right? So we're gonna make three integers and one and two and n three. And then say that I want to do something like this. I want n three to be equal to the minimum of n one, which is getting assigned to some, the return of some function, get next num. And we'll do the same thing with n two. Now, of course I could split this out, but in this case, I don't want to, because if this were a C function, I could get away with this just fine. No problem. Except of course that get next num doesn't exist yet. So let's go up and create it. So if I create guess get next num here, all I'm gonna do here, this is just a, a toy function, but let's just say it gets the next random number, the next number from rand, uh, but we're gonna, we'll scale it. So let's say next num equals rand. And let's scale it so that it goes from zero to 99. And then also just for clarity, normally I wouldn't have any printouts in this, but just so you can see what's going on, let's say next is percent %d, and then we'll just print out this next num. And then we'll just return next num. Okay, so all this is doing is grabbing a random number from zero to 99. And so this code down here, at least the way I envision it in my head is, and one should get the first random number and two should get the second random number. And then our macro should get the minimum of those two and set that to N3, right? And this would totally work if we were working with a function. But if we come down here and try to compile our code, well, we're having some problems, okay? We're having some problems in our macro. It's saying that this expression is not assignable. And the problem, again, if we look at what the preprocessor is producing is we've got a lot of ambiguity in here due to order of operation stuff. So what I can do here, simply there's a simple fix to this is we can come down here and just put parentheses around all of our a's and b's okay this is going to tell it evaluate this expression before you do anything with it and now if we come down and compile it oh we still have our problem down here i gotta remove this that's not going to work regardless so now it compiles okay it just fine and then if we run it then whoa what what happened right not quite what we wanted. We wanted to grab two random numbers and get the minimum of them. And it grabbed three random numbers. And we can see that just because next is printed out three times with three different numbers. And then we print out N3. And then if I come in here and let's just, let's update this just a little bit and let's print out N3. So you see three numbers and N3 happens to be assigned to the third number, right? It's not printing out the min of anything, it's printing out the third. And the reason for this, again, let's look at the pre-processed code is basically we are copy and pasting this code and so here we can see what it did. It basically is calling get next num twice for the comparison, so once here and once here. And then whichever, however the comparison works out, it's going to call it a third time either here or here. So that's gonna generate a third random number and return that number instead. And of course, it's not the minimum of the three, it's the maximum, though that's just incidental here. If we had different random numbers, it could end up being the minimum or it could end up being somewhere in the middle. But the point is, this is not doing what we want it to do. It's not doing what we intend 
intended. The macro is pretty fragile, it really only works with expressions that don't have any side effects, and because it's making extra function calls, as far as performance, this is actually going to be slower because it's making extra function calls, not to mention it's broken. So should we give up at this point and just say macros are terrible? I mean, maybe, you, you could do that if you want, but no, that's not what I'm going to do because there are a few things we can do to improve the situation. Because the obvious way to improve the situation is just not to evaluate the function over and over again, to not evaluate the expression multiple times. Instead, we want to evaluate it once and then use what it evaluates to. And we can do this up here by changing our macro. Now I'm going to, I'm going to leave a copy of the original one because any of you perusing the source code later on, I want you to be able to see where we've come from. Now at this point, I'm going to be changing things up just a little bit. And so instead of making a simple expression, I'm going to add curly braces here and make it a compound expression. That's just going to allow me to have multiple statements inside this expression. Let me know if you want to see more about compound expressions in a future video, but it's basically just an expression that can have multiple statements and expressions inside of it. Also keep in mind at this point that preprocessor macros are typically one line creatures. And so if we start heading into multiple lines, we're going to need to add backslashes at the end of each line like this. And that just tells the preprocessor to keep going onto the next line. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is to define a temporary int variable. Let's call it int underscore a. I can call it whatever I want, but to avoid confusion, we should ideally want it to be named something that doesn't show up elsewhere in my code. And I'm going to assign that to be equal to this expression A. And then let's also go down and do the same thing with B. And then down here, we can do the exact same thing, the exact same ternary operator code that we did before, but we're gonna do A is less than underscore B. We're basically just using these temporary variables instead of the expressions, instead of evaluating the expressions again. Okay, so now if we come down here and we compile it, well, it looks like we broke it again. Well, technically these are just warnings, but still what's going on? Now, remember before we were basking in all that flexibility that our macros provide, it could be in some floats and we didn't really care, but then we went and added these temporary variables and they're ints, and so now down here, when I throw floats at it, it's basically saying you've got a bunch of implicit conversions between float and int, and you're losing precision, and you're gonna get results that you didn't expect, and that's really not very desirable. It's not what I wanted. I don't want all of my floats and doubles being converted to ints, just because then we lose all that juicy stuff after the decimal point, and so that's kind of annoying. So are we stuck? Do we have to like make two macros just like we would have to do with functions here? Of course not, because we have one more trick up our sleeve, and that is the type of operation. So what I can do is come up here and say type of A. This is going to evaluate to be the type of the expressions of A and B. Type of is an operator I almost never use, but here it's really useful because this allows me to make my temporary variables equal to whatever the type is of the expression that I passed in. So if I pass in floats, I get a float. If I pass in ints, I get an int. And now some of you may be wondering right now, hey, now A is showing up again twice. So are we going to end up with that multiple function call scenario again? And no, we're not going to. And the reason is, is that the type of operator just evaluates the type of the expression. It doesn't actually run the code and evaluate the expression. So we should be fine. But let's just make sure, just to double check, we'll come down here and compile. Oh, I forgot to save it. We come down and compile. Uh, it looks like I have a space in there that's annoying. Okay, we'll compile it again. Now it compiles. So it compiles just fine, we're okay. And now if we run it, you can see now things are behaving the way that we want them to behave. Now, naturally, I could have just started you off with this version and said, this is how you do it. But I hope walking through the different versions from simplest to not so simple was helpful to, for you to see some of the problems that can come up when you are working with macros, especially if you don't think through all the type issues. Because these function-like macros are both powerful and potentially dangerous. And that's all the time I have for today. Let me know if you want to see more about the preprocessor in future videos. Like the video, subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. And if you want to dive a little deeper, check out my courses. Links in the description, and I'll see you next week.